Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time since we did a physics video, but uh, here in Pennsylvania we got two feet of snow over the weekend and um, not playing any disc golf. So I figure it's uh, a great time to talk a little bit about torque. I've been holding off on this because I've actually got an actual research study that's coming up this spring semester um, with the sports medicine professor who's going to help me actually study some of the torque in the human body and the the impact of the, that torque on the throw and how it affects the rotation of the disc and the um, and the velocity of the disc as it leaves your hand. But uh, just a brief intro on torque in disc golf. Um, so force equals mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law. If I apply a force to something, it has mass. It will feel an acceleration that is proportional to the force. So it means it just means if I push harder, it's going to accelerate faster at a higher rate, uh, but it's inversely proportional to the mass. So a more massive object requires more force to get the same acceleration. Um, so more force equals more acceleration, more mass equals less acceleration. All right, that's for translation. That's for linear acceleration. So uh, if I push my desk, it's gonna slide in a line. When it comes to rotation though, when you make something spin or turn, like when I'm rotating a disc, we don't talk about force, we talk about torque. Torque is force acting on like a lever arm. So if I've got this stick, it's attached here at this end. If I wanna make it rotate, I apply a force that is on this lever at some distance from the pivot. So the distance here from the pivot multiplied by the force is gonna give you the torque. More torque gives you more rotational acceleration or angular acceleration. All right, so what does all, that, what does all of that have to do with disc golf? Well, think about how you're gripping the disc. So part of the grip has to do with the nose angle and the angle of release, hyzer or anhyzer. Those are different topics. The topic we're talking about here, torque, we need the disc to spin. If it's not spinning, it's not gonna fly right. So how do you make something spin? I just got done telling you, you have to apply a torque to it. So if I just apply a force, if I am, imagine you're looking at me from above and I'm pulling the disc like this. Here's the center of gravity, center of mass of the disc. If I'm pulling straight in line with that center of mass, it's going to translate. That's a force causing it to accelerate, but it's not gonna rotate. If I grip like this as I pull through on the side of the disc, Here's the center of mass. Here's the force that I'm applying. That becomes a lever. It's gonna cause the disc to spin as I release it. So the torque that I apply is gonna equal the force that I'm pulling with multiplied by the distance from the pivot or the lever arm, which would be the radius of the disc. So can't grip in the front, not gonna get any rotation. You have to grip on the side there, so in order to get any rotation at all. The math gets a little bit complicated because it's a, a cross product. So it's the force times the radius times the sine of the angle between those two things. But you don't need to know that because we're pulling it approximately 90 degrees. So here's the lever, here's the lever, here's the force. That's about a 90 degree angle. So the sine of 90 is one that term goes away. So that's just a brief intro into torque of the actual throwing of the disc. There's a lot more torques involved. There's torque in the, the arm, the elbow, the shoulder, all the joints involve torque. Um, but I'll post more about that once I've done my research study because uh, you know, don't want to spoil it for you. I hope that was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Get out and throw some discs. Once we get out of the snow, we're gonna throw some discs up here too. Thanks for watching.